My name is Rick Miller, and I'm the founder and the executive director of Gay Sons and Mothers. In honor of Women's History Month, tonight's speaker is Suzanne Lobel, and the title of our talk is Hope and Resiliency, Lessons Learned from the Holocaust Through AIDS. So the first thing that I wanted to start out with so that people had a sense of what you've experienced in your life is that your family uh, was an affluent family in Germany and fled from Germany before or during the Second World War. And you went to Brussels with your mother and your sister. And, um, and, and my father. And your father, uh, where you were in hiding for I'm not sure how yeah. long. We left Germany in 1938. And we left before something called Kristallnacht. Many of you may have heard about when they really trashed. It uh, was a program when they trashed hundreds of synagogues in Germany, but we missed that. And we went to Brussels and I felt a real relief being there, even though I didn't speak French. Mm. And that first day, of the war, we were arrested because we were not only Jews to the Germans, we were Jews, but to the Belgians, we were Germans, and thus we were enemy aliens. And they arrested us. And um, by evening, uh, they, they dragged us actually to makeshift prisons, which happened to be my school. Mm -hmm. And um, by evening, they released women and children, but they kept my father. And um, within a couple of days, they shipped him to the south of France. And I didn't see him for six years. And things were more or less OK for the next two years. And then the, Ger the Germans arrested the Jews in Belgium and elsewhere in Europe and shipped them to extermination camps. But my mother had the good sense of uh, trying to hide us and she did so successfully. And we hid for the next two years, which was in part like the lockdown now. Life was a mixture of being scared Mm -hmm. and life being very dull. It made me a stronger, more compassionate human being. And strange as it might sound, the experience provided me with a deep faith in humanity. And I was struck by that quote. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Because the way, I mean, the second part of the quote, which I might not have written was, I really felt that if you have your back towards the wall, there's always somebody there who reach, is ready to help you. Wonderful. And I think that was the same thing in AIDS. Yes. And uh, my son was very much comforted by the fact that I had survived the Holocaust. Um, I mean, I was terrible. David, I don't think, minded the therapy. But I minded, you know, that everybody wanted to find out what was wrong with my family. Wow. And yeah. I still mind that everybody tried to tell me I had this wonderful kid. I mean, mm. I've, you know, he was a handful, but he was very creative and very loving and, you know, everything. And um, I mean, to, to tell me there was something wrong with him. I mean, yeah. they should have sent me home and said, you know, you're doing a good job and forget about this, you know, whatever mm -hmm. happens, happens, nobody knew. How did David tell you that he had AIDS and how was that for you? You know, and there were little stories in the New York Times, so yeah. it never escaped me. Of course. And um, uh, what it was and what the symptoms were and and you know and part of me was scared like anything from the time of the stories appeared in in the in the paper and there were so few cases so i figured well don't be silly of all the people who have aged your son should 
be contract aids, that's kind of ridiculous because in the beginning, I mean, there were just dozens of cases, you know. When he finally told me that um, he had gone for a test, you know, to get a positive, I mean, it was just more for confirmation than a total revelation. He called me and there was a time difference between California and yeah. New York. So by the time he called, I was just about to go to bed. Yeah. And he said, um, well, I don't know I, I, whether I should have called you or not, but I got my test results and wow. I'm positive. And mm. so was took the phone call in my hall and there was a chair there and all I could do is to sit down on that chair. And it was, you know, I believed from the beginning that no matter how scared I was, I wasn't going to let David know, know wow. that I was so. Do so you, did you pull that off? Yeah, no. I did, I think. Wow. I joined the mother's group and we can talk about that later. And I, I still stand by it. I rather go through the Holocaust again than through AIDS. Wow, that's really interesting. Can you talk about David's illness and death and how you handle that? Basically, we spent two weeks in his apartment. Yeah. Two, two weeks in the hospital, Mount Sinai Hospital. Yeah. Mount, Mount Zion, rather, Mount okay. Zion in San Francisco, in an ordinary room, and somebody had given that hospital a lot of money, so the, the AIDS patients had a private room, mm -hmm. and they were pretty nice, and it was good, and was we still laughed a lot, you know, and, um, and then Two weeks after that, he was uh, he. After that, he really collapsed, and he went into in, intensive care. Um, looking back, how did you get through this period of time in your life? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> just... I mean, I did my best. I have that ability, which is I'm really pretty good in a crisis. Yeah. I mean, I, in the crisis, I can always push things away. I figured I've thought that out. Now I have to attend to what is necessary. Yeah. You know, I, I certainly didn't want to be a sad sack. I wanted to be not a sad sack for my daughter. So, yeah. you know, so yeah. I put on a, smiling face which i do usually and you have always found strength in your life you've lived through various traumas yeah i think my parents were i think that was required of me i oh. hate people feeling sorry for me yeah you know so i don't know i think if you want to that's the way you know it, Right. I am. I'm very lucky that way. Every woman should have a gay son. I mean. Mm -hmm. <laughs>